Is junior hockey camp invite season? Here's what to look out for. So teams either have ID or prospect camps or main camp. And there is a difference between the two. Now, the misconception with the ID prospect camps is that they're a money grab. And the mistake people make is they don't take advantage of these opportunities. Let's start with what is a camp. So teams either have ID or prospect camps or main camp. And there is a difference between the two. The ID prospect camps are a little more open to the public. They are larger camps. They will have a greater amount of players and goalies there. A main camp is a smaller, more intimate camp. Usually the main camp is an invite only. They have the returning players, the players that they've tendered during the season, and those who made it through the ID and prospect camps. Those who are at main camp are the final group fighting for those last few spots so if you're at main camp or if you have a main camp invite you better be ready for it now the misconception with the id prospect camps is that they're a money grab and while they are bigger camps they're not showing an incredible amount of interest in you off the start you can still get signed to a team out of prospect or or id camp you are still able to get that contract to get that roster spot. Don't think that you can't. You just need to stand out. And since there's a larger amount of players, probably not of caliber to play there, you should stand out. You need to really stand out so that coach has his eye on you that entire weekend. The mistake people make is they don't take advantage of these opportunities. It is incredibly important that you research these camps. When I say research, I mean dig deep. Make sure that if you're spending the money, you're spending it in the right spot. If you are not a top tier U18 AAA player, you will need to go to camp and that is perfectly fine. You're gonna battle at camp. So when I say do research, what I mean by this is you get an invite by email. First step, call your buddies on the team and see if they got the email. If you all got the email, there's a very good chance that was massly sent to everybody especially if it's word for word identical and it's just your name that was changed there are tools out there that do that very easily the second step is read the email did they actually describe you as a player and be honest did they describe your style of play is it a genuine email saying oh yeah you blocked so many shots this year you're great at moving the puck up we think you fit our team that is an indicator that the coach actually saw you and he reached out to you directly but again this is after the first step of seeing if other players got the same email the third step is contact the coach respond to that email or give him a call ask him coach can we discuss this I i'd like to know more about the camp and on the phone if he is telling you that oh yeah there's spots open and we'll see how you do there and then that'll determine if you get invited to main camp or if he remembers who you are when you call him if he knows oh yeah we just sent you the email we'd love to have you out there's a difference between the two there's a huge difference between the two one of them the coach knows who you are either his scouts brought it to his attention or he's watched video on you the other one the coach doesn't know you from a list of players that he has in the spreadsheet so that is your third step contact the coach contact the scout whoever sent you that invite the fourth step and this one is crucial go check the team roster please go look at the roster go look how many players they're losing go look how many players they have signed go look at their advancements to see if it is a good spot if you do make the team the reason you want to go look how many players they have is because do you want to go try out for a team that carries 12 defensemen or 17 forwards are they only losing two and you're really going to be in the bottom of the lineup or are they losing eight guys nine guys there is some teams that have huge turnovers every turnover every year and there's some teams that have zero turnover every year so go do your research because it's not worth going to camp if there's no spots the sixth step and if all five first ones went well the sixth one see if you know somebody on the team contact them ask him about the camps because if he made the team he had to go to main camp at minimum ask him about how camp went ask him how his season went how happy he was there was it worth going and play there and i don't recommend you talk to the top player i recommend you talk to the talk to the lower mid-tier player on the team from there after these six steps you'll have a better idea if it is worth going to that camp or not because if not you're throwing away three to four hundred dollars and i know in junior hockey you'll most likely have to do four or five camps to make a roster now let's go into why why even bother going to camp why go through the, the the stress of this do i do them all do i do none let's start with the why the why you do camp is because you were most likely a standard player in the u18s and there's nothing wrong with that you were not an exceptional player and again there's nothing wrong with that everybody has their own role but the role players there's a lot more of them than the skill players so you'll have to battle it out at camp so you will need to go to camp and fight for your spot now do you go to all the camps no not at all like i said if you've received 10 camp offers you take those six steps and you go through it with each of them from there you will most likely have three to four camps that make sense to go to those three or four you sign up 
and you do what you got to do. And unfortunately, you'll have to sign up to all of them in advance so that you don't lose a spot. And hopefully you make it on the first camp. You'll have lost your money on the other three, but at least you'll have a spot to play. Because like I said, those role players, there's hundreds of them. So to answer your question, no, do not go to all the camps. Do not sign up to 15, 20 different camps. Make sure you're doing your research. And this is not mom and dad. This is the kid. You want to play junior hockey. You want mom and dad to give you that experience. Put in the time. Make sure that they're not throwing away their money because junior hockey isn't cheap either. When looking at these spring ID camps, the ratio of players that go to main camp isn't big. Truth is, most of the guys that go to main camp are returning players, tendered players or signed players, and then the three to six players that were super, super strong at their ID camps. So for you to make that jump up, you need to be extremely dominant at the ID camp, especially that the talent will not be that strong. There's going to be a lot of guys that sign up for those camps that should not be there in the first place. So if you stand out, you might get invited. Now, what to do at camp? We're going to go over some details right now that are super important. Dress professionally. Do not be the kid walking around in flops with a backwards hat with messy hair in a hoodie and shorts. Walk around in a polo and dress pants. Show that you're a professional. Show that you're there for business. I'm not saying wear a full suit, at least business, business casual. Show that you were there for the right reasons. Now people are gonna say, that doesn't matter. Coaches will be watching everything you do. The way you walk, the way you interact. Do you sit alone in between practices? Are you sitting with the guys getting to know them? Are you dressed professional? Are you too cocky where your head can't fit through a door? These are things that coach are watching on and off the ice. So first, dress professionally. If you have a practice at 2 o'clock, do not show up at 1.30 or 1.45. One o'clock latest, an hour before your session, at the latest. Do a proper warm-up before the practice or the game. Make sure you're in the corner stretching, making sure that your body feels good. Because in junior hockey, the guys who don't take care of themselves do not last the season. They get injured, they get tired, they lose their spot. When you're on the ice, you're working at 150% at all times. There's a bag skating drill, you better go until you can't skate anymore. There's a back checking drill, you better be the first back checker. Two on ones, three on ones, you're making a smart play. You're making solid passes. You get a bad pass, do not swing your stick. For the love of God, do not swing your stick. Not on the floor, not on the bench. Don't show any type of anger. Mistakes happen. This is a game of mistakes. This is a game of inches. You make mistakes, that guy next to you makes mistakes. Your attitude is huge. When practice is over, go shake the coach's hands. Those small moves make a huge difference. If in the first day, first practice, you did not stand out, you go shake the coach's hand, come next practice, he's gonna remember that because not many of those kids are gonna come say thank you and he's gonna remember who came to say thank you to him, who came to say hi and introduce themselves. And when you get back on the ice, he will be looking at you because it shows professionalism. It shows a mature young man. It shows a kid who wants to put in the work, a kid who's dedicated to his craft and will do what it takes to play. And like I said, there is hundreds of role players, you just need to stand out. And like I said, you'll probably have to do between two and five camps to make a team. Unless you stand out in that first camp, you came prepared, you trained, you did everything you had to do and it went perfectly well. But you need to remember that these camps are short, three, maybe four days. So every single thing you do matters on and off the ice. If you like this video, click this one or this one for more content just like it. If not, hit the link down below to reach out to us with any of your questions.